Hey alligators, what's up? It's Allie Hardesty. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I am going to kick it off with a story time today because I haven't done one in a while. My last video, my last story time that I uploaded, I had different color hair and it was longer. So no, I did not miraculously grow back out my hair and dye it again just to dye it back. That was filmed in November. So obviously I have been doing a lot of pre-uploaded videos lately and not sorry about it because I've been really busy, but it feels so great to be back filming, so here I am. Today's video is super crazy and I'm honestly scared to upload. I've been putting it off for a while just because I know the people in the story are going to see it and <laughs> I'm not sorry about it. I'm sorry if you're seeing this because you're a terrible person and we're just gonna get on with the video. I just wanna give some background info before I jump right into this. This took place my sophomore year in high school when I went to school in California because yes, I did go to two separate high schools. If you've been following my channel for a while, you would know that. And the girl in this story, we need to give her a special name, but her name in real life, let's just say that it is very similar to my name. It is not my name, but it has the same exact amount of letters. Starts with the same letter, same with her last name. It's literally the same initials, sounds the same, same syllables. Her last name literally is like a shorter version of my last name. So the fake name is gonna look nothing like her real actual name just for privacy reasons. So we're gonna call her Rebecca today. But just know that in high school, her name was so similar to mine that people easily got us messed up, not because we looked alike, not because we acted alike, not because we were friends or anything of that nature, just simply because of the fact that our names sounded similar. So you know when you're going into high school and there's all these people coming from different middle schools, people don't really know the names to faces, like it's hard to place that. So for example, there's this one chick that I could not stand in my class. She sat in front of me in US history. I've actually mentioned her in other videos, but we never gave her a fake name because she's irrelevant. And this girl was talking about Rebecca, but like I said, her name is very similar to mine. And she told this whole story about how Rebecca was in rehab for stealing a car, selling drugs and all this stuff, which pretty sure that actually did happen because she was in rehab. I don't really know the backstory, but she told this whole story. But while telling the story, she used my name instead of Rebecca's real name because they were that similar. So that is how easily people had us messed up. I literally tapped the girl on the shoulder and I was like, uh, I'm right here, I'm not in rehab, you have the wrong girl, that's Rebecca. Also, I went to school with this girl from elementary school all the way up to high school and she was always a really mean girl, we were never friends. In fact, in seventh grade, she wrote me an anonymous letter saying how much she hated me and I knew that it was from her but she gave it to me anonymously saying that some random person gave it to her to give to me. So I don't know, there was just some stuff wrong with her. She was such a bully, she was mean to everyone. So I just naturally stayed away from her, right? Another character, which I am going to be talking about, who's a huge component of the story, we're gonna give him a fake name, we're gonna call him Brad. I met Brad beginning of my sophomore year, like pretty much summer going into sophomore year at the mall with a bunch of friends. He was with a couple of his other friends. One of his best friends, we're gonna call him Cameron, and then the other one, we're gonna call him Manny. So they were like, three peas in a pod. And so my friends and I, we naturally started hanging out with them a whole lot. We became really close with their group of friends. And so early into sophomore year, Rebecca and Brad started dating. So they were together, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. This lasted for a little while. And because of that, me and Brad's friendship sort of faded out. We just didn't talk as much because I'm a girl, I understand how that is. I don't wanna be all best friends with somebody else's boyfriend, just out of respect. You know, I knew me and him were still friends, but he was dating her at the time. and. A lot of guys dated her in middle school, high school, all that, just because I feel like people didn't really know her true colors until they experienced being friends with her personally or dating her personally. He was gonna date her and they were gonna break up and I'd have my friend back. So I didn't really talk to him while they were dating. So maybe after a couple months of them going out, he hits me up, he texts me and he says, hey, do you wanna go to the drive-ins with me on Friday? And I was like, well, aren't you dating I almost said her real name, aren't you dating Rebecca? And he was like, no, we broke up. Do you wanna go to the drive-ins with me? I'm going with Manny and Cameron. And I was like, okay, for sure, just as friends. You know, I never thought anything weird of it because I had been friends with him for a while now. We had hung out plenty of times as a group of friends before he was dating Rebecca and they broke up, right? That's what he told me. So I'm like, all right, I'll go to the drive-ins with you. And my parents were really strict. They still are, but I don't live with them anymore. So in high school, if I ever wanted to go out with any boy whatsoever, even as friends, they would have to meet them. Like they would have to come inside, shake my parents' hands and all that stuff. My mom was a teacher. She was actually all of those guys' teachers because they went to a separate high school. So my mom was like, oh, it's fine. You can go out with them. It's all good. So they came to pick me up and the car they picked me up in was Cameron's truck. 
So I was riding with Cameron, some girl he met on Tinder. This might have actually been before Tinder. So in that case, it was like Instagram. Someone he met online, like a blind date sort of thing. And then it was Brad and myself. So we're on our way to the drive-ins. And when we get there, we meet up with Manny and his girl, who again was like a Tinder girl or some girl on Instagram. And also just some background info, me and Manny, we kind of had a thing before this, but it was never that serious. It never really went anywhere. We were just sort of better off as friends, but we did, sort of like each other for a period of time and it was like that i was probably the closest with him out of this entire friend group and he's the only one i still associate with to this day because screw the other two guys and so uh we get there and we meet up with manny who i didn't even know was going to be there honestly i don't even think he mentioned it or it was just sort of like oh he might show up but he didn't come with us in the car so i think i didn't know he was going to actually be at the drive-ins when we got there i had never been to the drive-ins before in my life so i was super excited just to watch the movie eventually cameron and his girl they get out of the truck so then me and brad are in the back seat alone and again didn't think anything weird of it until he started getting really really freaking creepy i'm gonna skip through this part pretty fast just in case it does trigger some people i would linger on it more but that's for a whole other video this is a story time this isn't like a freaking sob story but basically this story time this took place in like september because it was a month before his birthday and so we were talking about his birthday and i was like oh my gosh i need to get you a present you know how in high school you usually will bake cookies for your friends or bring them balloons to school or whatever like he didn't go to my school but i intended on like making him a card or like something and so i was like oh yeah like what do you want for your birthday and he was like well you can give me my birthday present right now and he was just being really weird and i was just like <laughs> like trying to take it as a joke but he was being dead serious and he was trying to like sexualize it and i was just like oh hell no like this is not happening i was just like <laughs> super awkward like no dude like what kind of chocolate cake do you want you want one with vanilla frosting you know sprinkles on top i just tried to keep the subject as G-rated or PG as possible, like far, far away from that sort of thing. And he was just being really, really creepy. I had never experienced that side of him up until this point. So I didn't really know what to do. And it just started getting worse and worse. He was asking for a kiss. He was asking, which like, that's not that bad, but it just got progressively worse. Use your imagination. He just kept trying to like do things with me. And I was like, no. And he asked why. He just kept saying, well, why not? Like, as if my reasoning, like, no, I don't want to, wasn't good enough. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a red freaking flag. I should have got out of the car right then and there, but I didn't know what to do because I did come with him. I didn't have a way of leaving. And keep in mind, the drive-ins are all the way, like, an hour from where I lived at the time. So I kind of felt like I was trapped, and he was my friend. I didn't want to think that he would ever take advantage of me, but he pretty much did. He kept asking to do things. I kept saying no, and again, like I said, he kept asking for reasons why. So I gave him a bunch of BS things why, like, oh, I just don't feel like it. I just don't like you like that. I mean, these were all true, but really, I just didn't want to. End of story. So then I told him, you know, you're not my boyfriend. I don't kiss boys who aren't my boyfriend. I really didn't at the time. I was like pretty young. I only kissed a couple of guys. And so he was like, all right, then do you want to be my girlfriend? And I was like, you're not serious. And he was like, no, really, will you go out with me? He asked me to be his girlfriend. And I was like, no, still no, that doesn't change anything. Like you're just asking me to be your girlfriend so we can hook up. And I don't even like you anyways. Even if that wasn't the reason why you're asking me out, I would still say no because I'm just not interested in you. I just don't see you like that. And so I started getting really firm about it. And that must have pissed him off really bad to the point where he did get really aggressive with me and tried to reach down my pants, pull himself on top of me, pull me on top of him and just use your imagination. It got really, really bad. And I didn't know what to do. It didn't go on for very long until I finally got out of the car. He had locked the car door, but then I was able to like reach up and unlock it. And I ran out of the truck all the way to the concession stand, which was like pretty far back from where the car was parked, ran to the concession stand and I got an extra large high C fruit punch drink. To this day, I can still not drink those. I can't even look at one of those because it reminds me of this night so much and I'll explain why. So I chugged down the extra large drink and I never drink drinks that large like the only drink i will drink a large quantity of is water like not soda not juice anything like that and especially not now so i literally chug down this extra large drink of high sea fruit punch and then i refill it and start drinking it some more and at this point manny the guy that i said i used to talk to like a little bit before this that was there with the tinder or instagram girl he had followed me he saw me run off so he chased me out there and then he sat down with me at the table while i drank my drink and he asked me what happened so i told him he started to get really mad and at this point i was not feeling too good i was disgusted from what had happened in the truck when i felt like i had no choice but to run out of the vehicle into the concession stand that guy brad he's an asshole he didn't even bother following me because 
he's a piece of shit. So he was still in the car. Manny chased after me to make sure I was okay. He didn't even know what happened. So I told him what happened and he was like, you know what? He always does this. He's such an asshole. That's why I was surprised that you were even here with him. Why do you like him? And I was like, I don't like him. Like I thought he and I were just coming as friends. At this point, I was literally about to puke and I did puke. So I ran into the girl's restroom and I puked up all of the high C fruit punch, like the extra large drink and a half because I had like almost two full ones of them. And I never puke. So I remember this so vividly. Like even when I had the stomach flu, it is so hard for me to actually like get stuff back up because I just hate puking I hate throwing up so it was just I was not having it it was a pretty bad night so I come back out of the restroom and then he's really upset at this point he's really really mad he's like I cannot go near him right now I'm gonna like get in a fist fight with him a confrontation or something he's like just stay with me let's go in my car so the Instagram girl I don't know what she was doing she was just like texting and she went over by her friend who Cameron had brought so that was just that was just the fail. The girls they brought were not into them. They were not into the girls. So at this point, it was just Manny and I on our own. And it was actually freezing at this point because the drive-ins, you're like kind of outside unless you're actually in the trucks, but you're usually in like the bed of the trucks or lawn chairs. So we actually locked ourselves in the back of Manny's car in the trunk. That sounds really weird and really unsafe, but it was fine. He has a really big trunk. And so we laid back there and we just talked. And then I started to feel a lot better, like physically and mentally, because he was just telling me like, it's not your fault. Like you had no idea he was going to do that etc and I was like it's okay like I don't really want to talk about it and so him and I we just had a good time like hanging out in there or whatever finally the movie was over and it was time to go home so at this point Manny was like I'm not letting you get back in the car alone with him so I'm gonna ride back with you so then Cameron drove his car or something like that so at this point I was in the car with Manny and Brad the freaking douchebag dude and then I don't even know a couple of the Instagram girls might have been with us but the point was I was sitting next to Manny and not Brad like Brad was like a decent ways away from me and he and I have been really good friends so I was just confused why he did that to me and so when we get in the car he apologizes he's like Allie I'm so sorry I didn't mean to do any of that I've just been going through a really rough time lately and I'm just upset and like I have emotional issues hashtag stuff f boys say when they get caught or think that you're going to expose them to all of your hot girlfriends that they want to get with and I was just like it's fine but obviously I never hung out with him again looking back I wish that I did tell a trusted adult because I know that this guy has done this sort of thing to other girls and other girls have come forward but I just did it and there are reasons why I did not go forward with this because of things that have happened to me in the past with guys which I'm not even going to get into in this video but just trust me when I say that I know that I should have handled this a little bit differently but there are reasons why I did not because I've been in other situations similar to what happened to me that night so we drive home they drop me off and Brad tries to apologize again and I was like whatever dude like screw you you know I went back inside my house and then they drive home Home, they get home Manny calls me and he goes hey I just want to say again I'm really really sorry that happened to you that wasn't cool my blood is like boiling right now I really don't want to hang out with Brad anymore I know him and I have been best friends for years because they were like brothers like the three of them Cameron Manny and Brad they were all like best freaking friends like homies you know what I'm saying And he was like I just don't even want to like hang out with him or be associated with him anymore because it makes me look like a really bad guy and I'm not like that. I want you to know that not all guys are like that. And then he was like, honestly, I'm gonna be real with you. Another reason why I'm upset that just happened is because you and I were just sort of talking and I told him I still had feelings for you like a week ago and then he invited you and I'm pissed about it. And I was like, oh my God, like, I'm so sorry. I had no idea because like I said, he and I kind of talked, but it just never really went anywhere. Like it wasn't that serious. So I didn't really even think about it in terms of that because him and I had always just basically been friends. Like it just didn't really work out in that direction. You know what I mean? So I didn't think about it as being messed up. And I did not know that he still liked me at all. I probably still liked him too. I don't know. This was a long time ago. And then he started talking about Brad and Rebecca, the girl who had a really similar name to mine, which I almost keep accidentally saying in this video. So he starts talking about them being together. And I was like, wait, what? Like, they're dating. Like, he told me they broke up. And he was like, are you freaking serious? No, they've been dating. They're in a relationship right now. I was actually really surprised that you went with him because of that. And I was like, I would never have gone with him, even as friends, if I knew he still had a girlfriend. I was like, I know where I go to school with her. Like, that's so awkward. That's so bad because he did like kiss me like try to kiss me I didn't actually like kiss him back but you know he was like all over me and stuff and just he asked me to be his girlfriend so I told Manny that I was like he asked me to be in a relationship with him obviously I don't think he really meant it he was just trying to get in my pants but still he kept asking me to date him and he was saying all this stuff to try to like you know win me over which that stuff does not work with me let me tell you and he was so pissed he was like oh my god I cannot believe this guy this guy's such an f boy and I was mad at this point too and then perfect timing right guess who I get a phone call from? 
It's not the girl, actually, that might have been what you were thinking, but from Brad. So Brad calls me, and what do I do? Take a wild guess. I put him on through a call, but Manny is now on mute. So Brad starts talking a bunch of crap about Manny. He's like, honestly, you know, Manny was just hella mad because I was with you, because he was jealous, and like all this stuff that you obviously just should not say about your best friend that he did not need to be telling me. And a lot of it wasn't even necessarily true. He was just like over exaggerating it, trying to put the blame on like something else that had nothing to do with the fact that he had a girlfriend. So then I bring that up. I was like, wait, so um, you and Rebecca, you guys still dating, I hear? And he was like, well, um, I mean, I mean, I guess, but like she's grounded right now. So she doesn't need to know, okay? Don't make the situation harder than it needs to be. Like, I'll tell her myself. And I'm like, you're not going to tell her yourself, dude. You just cheated on your girlfriend. And he was like, no, like, let me be the one to tell her. And so... Normally, again, looking back in retrospect, I would have handled this completely different. I would have actually went and told the girl because obviously I'm sure she would have loved to know. But like I said, this was a special circumstance because of the fact that I didn't do anything with him. He was a freaking creep. And also because I knew the girl personally, I knew she would never believe me if I said anything bad about her boyfriend. And she was just a mean girl. and I just did not want to get involved with her. Like I wanted to say as far as possible away from her. So I was just like, okay, this is your own problem, dude. And like by the looks of everything, I knew he had cheated on her with like other people. So I was like, I'm like probably not even as much of a factor as like other girls he must be hooking up with behind her back. Cause I knew he talked to other girls, but I thought that he was single, right? So I was like, whatever, like you have problems when I hung up the phone, life moves on. So probably like the next week at school, like a Monday or Tuesday or something like that. I was walking around at lunch and my school in California, my high school, it was an outdoor campus. So at lunch, I typically walked around with my friends. I would visit like different groups on campus and like say hi, like say what's up. And so my best friend Maya and I, she totally remembers this too. Oh my God. We were walking around in like this big circle, like up these huge stairs on my campus. And we passed a lunch table of which Rebecca belonged to. Like she sat there a lot of the time and ate lunch, but I never really looked over there. Like I never even really knew that because she was always gone from school because like I said, she was in rehab for like stealing a car or something for a while. So she must have just got back from rehab. I think it was around that time. And I'm pretty sure that's why she was grounded, like connecting all the dots right now. So anyways, she happened to be at school that day. And right as we're walking past her lunch table, because I am a dumbass and I am not observant and I did not look around myself before I started talking about this. And I talk really loud. This was not on purpose. Seriously, total coincidence. So I'm telling Maya, Oh my God, I can't believe that Brad is still dating Rebecca and he took me to the drive-ins. What an asshole. I said something along those lines. I'm not exactly 100% sure what I said, but I did say her name extremely loud, like her full name. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which is basically a shorter version of my name. Like our names are so similar, it's not even funny. And also her boyfriend's name. And I said it so loud. I didn't mention him being all rapey or any of that stuff because I'm pretty sure I had already told her that in confidence. So we were just like sort of recapping on the situation. And I just said it in like one sentence, like a very general, like, oh, her boyfriend cheated on her with me type of thing. Maya, she's like, Ali whatever you do, do not look behind you. So obviously, what do I do? I look behind me. I look back, she's standing right there, probably like five to 10 feet to the left of me. So extremely freaking close. All our friends heard it too, but she was the only one who was really looking or like paying attention, you know? Cause when you hear someone call your name, like you automatically look. And I said her name so loud. And then I said like the whole sentence about her boyfriend being a cheater. So I'm just like, oh crap. Like, okay, we need to keep walking. So we continue to walk and she didn't follow me. She didn't chase me. She didn't really do anything. I obviously knew she was gonna go ahead and call Brad and be like what is this about because she knew that he and I were friends like obviously I wasn't just completely making that up like something must have happened right and I just knew that it would not be a good situation for me to even sit down and try to talk to her and be like yo your boyfriend did this and like I had no idea you guys were together you know what I mean so that's the only reason why I didn't go and talk to her if it would have been anyone else like anyone at least decently approachable I would have went up and talked to them but like I said she was just full-blown the last person on earth I ever wanted to have that kind of conversation with so I didn't and obviously I also knew that Brad being the person that he turned out to be would tell her that it was a lie like he would somehow put the blame on me which guys always freaking do even though like girl be real how did I make your boyfriend cheat on you but so apparently he must have told her something along the lines of like I threw myself onto him and like he didn't even bring me like I just showed up there which doesn't make any freaking sense like you guys picked me up at my house, like, check his text messages, I don't know. So the next day on Instagram, I get tagged in a post by her, which I didn't even get a notification for because she blocked me before doing this, but she tags me and then acts like I'm too scared to reply to her. Even though I was blocked, I couldn't even see it. So then my best friend ended up commenting for me saying, yo, like you blocked her though, like, 
what the heck, why are you trying to act hard on Instagram, you know? And then she blocks my best friend. So basically just going off on a rant saying like, you hooked up with my boyfriend, you slut. And of course she did not like put it into the words of the situation that really happened at all, which I can't blame her because she didn't talk to me, but would she really have listened to me? Like, no, she listened to her boyfriend, which I'm pretty sure told her that I was stalking him. That's why I ended up at the drive-ins at the same time as him because I just like so happened to see him there because I'm a stalker because I'm like in love with him, right? That was the story that he told her or the story that she like put on Instagram for whatever reason. So couldn't really defend myself, but then all I know is that for the next like couple of months, she would always leave mean comments on my pictures. She kept making fake profiles to do this. Every time I post a picture, she'd be like, ugly, slut, whore, I hate you. Like every single picture I would post, she would have something to say. Even a couple months ago on my best friend Alexa's picture, and this girl, like we haven't seen her in years. Like, I don't know what happened to her, right? She comments on my best friend's picture of her cat and she's like, wow, really? You have nothing better to do with your life except for take pictures of your cat? Like, she's such a mean girl, okay? But she like severely Instagram bullied me under like several different accounts, just like on my pictures, like leaving hate, which like honestly is super funny to me. Like it being 2017, like girl, what are you doing? Like you need to get a life if all you have to do with your life is make fake profiles. Like eventually you're gonna run out of fake profiles to make. Cause you know how under like one phone number, you can only make like X amount of accounts, which the reason why I know this is because of catfishing, which that's a whole other story time, how I got caught catfishing someone's pictures from Nevada. So if you want to hear that, leave that down below. So yeah, this was a story about the time that I was a side chick accidentally. Didn't even want to be the side chick though. Didn't even want to be the main chick. Didn't even want to be the chick at all. I just wanted to be his friend. But now after that incident, clearly I just didn't want anything to do with him. They did eventually break up because let's be real. She's not an idiot. Even if she was fronting on Instagram that way, like she knows that that was not a coincidence. I wasn't really stalking him to end up there. If you guys like this video, if you want more videos like this, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Also subscribe and hit notifications because lately YouTube has been really sucking. It's been glitching out. People have been unsubbed for my channel who did not want to be unsubbed. So make sure that you hit that just as an extra measure of, you know, confirmation that you're part of the Gator fam. And also check out my other story times. I'll leave a playlist below and my other videos if you want to. And I will see you guys next time. Later, alligators. Bye.